capability, so, and uh, we come up, but we, we do the exercises that we have done before. So here we have a portafolio, simply with two assets, asset one and asset two. Again, X is the quantity that I can invest in asset one, and X two is the quantity that I invest in the asset two, simple. Now I want to get the expected return of my portfolio. Here is the uh, multiplication of the quantity invested in uh, asset one, uh, multiply the expected return invested in the asset one, plus the quantity invested in the asset two multiplied for the expected return. Again, I can also calculate the uh, standard deviation of my portfolio, and the standard deviation of my portfolio is equal to the variance of each component including in the portfolio plus uh, my covariance. Watch out that when uh, we have these guys here, this is the covariance, the covariance is just the multiplication of the correlation coefficient, uh, that is my rho, this guy here, multiply uh, the standard deviation of the two axes. Uh, as you know, correlation coefficient goes uh, from minus one to plus one. So plus one means that the assets are perfectly correlated. When one goes up, or the other one goes up, negatively correlated means that they move in the opposite direction. One goes up, the other one goes down. Then you can also have something in the middle. So the, the rock can take a value between minus one and one. So it can take a value 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 7, 7. So the relationship, when we look at the, uh, at basically, uh, at, the, at this formula here, at the balance of the portfolio, the relationship is not linear, it's a function of the row. So the lower the correlation, the lower will be the total portfolio variance. And it's followed then, and we will see later, the higher diversification means lower correlation, lower correlation leads to lower variance of my portfolio, Lower variance also means low risk. Why we speak about risk? Because of course, more is high the volatility of my portfolio, more I can go far from my mean. So eventually I can also lose a lot of money. So, and uh, uh, this is why we speak about uh, volatility. Um, Okay, we can also, now we can simply generalize the formula. If we have N securities, simply I have to do, to calculate my, uh, my um, expected return of my portfolio, I just need to multiply the quantity invested in each security for the expected return of each security. Why for the variance I will have, uh, I need to calculate N variance and N minus multiply N, uh, N multiply N minus one covariance. This is an example. Okay. Uh, do you have questions? Are you familiar with this concept? You should be familiar with this concept. Are you familiar with this concept? Yes or not? Good, so we can go faster. Good. So, now we have these two components. We know the expected return. We know what the stand, uh, standard deviation is. If I want to get uh, an idea um, of how much my investment uh, uh, performs well, what I need to, to have, I need to have a, an index that adjusts the risk, uh, the, the, the performance of my portfolio for the risk profile of my portfolio. And this is uh, this is the sharp ratio, where I have the risk premium, <coughs> where the risk premium is the difference of the expected return of my portfolio minus the risk rate, okay? And this is the reward. So basically this difference gives me a, a, a measure of the reward from having in for, uh, for a risk investment. So how much I'm, I'm, I take a risk, how much I'm, I'm gaining from
from investing in a risky activity, in the delivery. Then I just correct this quantity for the standard deviation. So this will provide me with an information of how much is the performance given the risk. I just divide it for the standard deviation of the excessive case. We know how to calculate this. We know how to calculate the standard deviation because there are the formula that we saw before. So we can also calculate the standard deviation. Simple. the standard deviation, but then what I need to take in account, I need to take in account a different risk aptitude of each individual person. So there are persons that are more uh, risk averse, so they, they, uh, they don't want to take too much risk, yeah? so they prefer to get a little bit less uh, if they have to take too much risk. Yeah? And there are also persons, of course, that uh, uh, instead uh, uh, are willing to take risk in order to gain more money. So there are, of course, uh, um, different uh, types of uh, um, utility function. So you, how you, now, so given a different risk aptitude, I need to get the formula, mathematical formula that allow me uh, to measure and to uh, formalize this risk behavior, risk attitude of uh, each person. This is basically uh, what uh, um, what we lead us to the utility function. So the utility function basically is a, can be can take this for, form. Doesn't mean that all the utility doesn't mean that all the utility function has this uh, formulation. This is just an example. One mathematical function that is usually a common, commonly used uh, for this type of, uh, in this type of, in, for this topic. So here, I, the investor use their own utility function to rank uh, different investment opportunities and then decide which opportunity is more convenient given the own risk <coughs> So here, I, uh, what I have, I have the expected return minus the coefficient, that is standard, A and my standard deviation. A basically, it's a measure of the, is a coefficient uh, um, that allows me to measure the uh, risk attitude of an investor. So, for example, if uh, A is equal to zero, this means uh, that the, uh, the guy is risk neutral. And uh, if uh, uh, A is positive, uh, this means uh, that an investor will only invest in, a, in, a, in a, will invest the money investment only if the uh, risk premium, so the difference between the expected return of investment and uh, the risk rate is positive, and A equal minus than zero, instead it's a risk uh, lower. Why? Because if you put this guy is negative, as you can see, the utility of a person became a positive function of the volatility. So this means that the person is seeking to take more risk uh, because the utility that is that the uh, utility uh, of an investment for that person is going to be higher. So utility means that it's a function more is high, more means uh, that is uh, the utility that you can get from th those investments. So in the case of risk clover, as again, a negative value will make uh, positive the impact of uh, volatility that is a measure of risk. So looking at, for example, at a simple example here, we can have uh, a risk investment with expected return 
standard deviation that we call the percent, and then I can invest a money in a key bill. Remember, we spoke about the treasury bills this morning. Treasury bills is a measure of risk-free investment, money market, short term. So in this case, uh, how we can use the utility function to make it, to, to, you know, how an investor can make use of uh, a utility function to decide where to invest the money. So basically, just substituting the information, so utility of the risk free rate is public, of course, because uh, the volatility, by assumption, a risk free rate means that do not have any risk. So the standard deviation is going to be equal to, to zero. So in the case of, if in this example, uh, my treasury bills is equal to 5%, this means the utility of an investment in, risk -free rate, in the risk free rate is going to be equal to five, okay? Because this component is going to be equal to zero because this guy is equal to zero. Then I just substitute the expected return, the standard deviation of my investment in my utility function, and I just change my A, that is the coefficient of uh, risk aversion. So more A is higher, more you are risk averse. Okay? Why? Because uh, if you go back, sorry, if you, if you look here at the formula, more A is becoming, is becoming bigger, more the expected return of your investment is decreasing, so also your utility function is dropping down. So the utility of investing in, in that asset is becoming low because A, so a more risk averse. So more this became bigger, more this quantity is negative became bigger, more the perceived, so the, the, inter, the expected return that I perceived to get is going to be low. Is going to affect my utility function. So if you look at this example, the only guy that will invest so in this uh, risky asset is the guy with a very low A. So more uh, with low risk aversion. So only the investor that have a low risk aversion will invest, will prefer to invest in this uh, asset. Why? Because if we we mathematically uh, in substitute the expected return, the standard deviation, and the A of my uh, investor, you, you will see that the utility function is higher than the utility of investing in a risk free rate. For all the other investors that have a higher risk aptitude, you will see that the utility of investing in a risk free rate is higher. So this means that we pre they will prefer to put the money here instead then yeah. How do you think that I can calculate A? Because of course A, we just in this example, we have one, three, five. So suppose that you are a, a broker and you have to invest the money of your clients. You need to understand how much risk the guy, the, your client is willing to take given the uh, payoff of your investment. So how can I get the A? Mobile, please. How can I get my A? An example. If you want to know the A of one person, what do you do? It's a number, but the number reflects your risk attitude. How can I know if you are risky or not? If, uh, if you are, how can I know your risk attitude? Huh? It's, it doesn't matter the market because it's individual. Each investor, me, I have a different A than you. You have a different Of course, uh, there are some quantitative information that I have to take through income, uh, family, family situation, but also, so basically, you can get the A of your client through questionnaires, mm -hmm. okay, asking questions. So, of relating to the personal situation, but also to other, uh, other so in, in the book, for example, I can, I think that there is, uh, there is an 
example of question. Eh? Some questions, uh, it was published from his survey, published from uh, the Wall Street Journal. So you have to answer some question, at the end you will sum up your score, uh, and then this will give you your rank. So you are, uh, it will let you know what's your A. So your risk attitude is very, you are risk averse, although you will have uh, an A very high. You are, uh, um, instead of risk seeking, your A will be. So it depends on your risk aptitude that you can get uh, through questions or other stuff. Eh? You will be able then uh, to select uh, and to compare different investment opportunities and decide where to do So this is the idea of the utility function and the, ability, uh, the idea of uh, using the utility function to compare different investment opportunities given the risk aptitude of each investment. Okay, so um, at the end, uh, I can also get a indifference curve that is given by all the combination of the expected return and risk, so my standard deviation, which will provide the same utility, level of utility. So in this case, you have the level of utility fixed, uh, two, and if you want to design the indifference curve, you just need to, given an expected return, you can calculate then the standard deviation. Okay? If you remember, if you have the formula, you know, A, you know, you know the expected utility, so you can take it. And then, if you do this job here, as you can see, what, what do you know? Looking at this uh, graph, is the tables. What do you notice? <coughs> there is also the comment down. So what I should notice, if I'm here, as you can see, given the expected return, if I want to improve my utility function, <coughs> the standard deviation is going to be down. And here, uh, of course, uh, if the expected level is better than the one, so so graphically we can represent this in this way. So this means that if I want to get uh, uh, if, if I want to get the same level of utility, as you can see here, so this is my utility, okay? If I increase my risk, uh, and you have my standard deviation. So if I increase the risk of my investment, of course, uh, I want to get an expected return higher. And again, um, let's see, this was it. It is our, an example of the three cube that you can get. So now we know the basic concept, we can go, we can see how we can combine, uh, how we can invest our money in different type of assets, risky and risk-free uh, portfolio. Um, and let's go here. So now we're supposed to have a, com a composition of P and F already decided. So now you, we are not looking at how you select P and F. Given the fact that you can <coughs> select P and F, simply I can get, as you know, the return of my complete portfolio as a multiplication, as we saw before, of the return of each asset multiplied the quantity invested in each asset. At the same time, I can also get the 
so I can get this particular tone, I can also get the standard deviation of my portfolio. Of course, the standard deviation of my portfolio doesn't have, does just have the standard deviation of the risky portfolio. Because as we said before, the standard deviation of the risk the asset is equal to zero. So here I have uh, a risk free assets, uh, F. The standard deviation of my complete portfolio is only given by risk of the risk free assets. So if I just take this equation here, okay? So if I take this equation here, that is simple, it's just, uh, I just rewrite uh, through a simple algebra the expected return of my portfolio as a, and I can express the expected return of my portfolio as a function of the risk free rate plus the investment y multiply the difference between the expected return of my um, uh, portfolio, risk free portfolio minus the risk free rate. If I just substitute it here y that I can get from this guy, I can rewrite my equation in this way where I have the risk free rate multiply uh, uh, the, the ratio between uh, uh, these two components uh, uh, of risk, uh, multiply this difference. As we know, this is the, uh, for uh, this is just the uh, rewarding of my investment. So if, if, if I uh, risk a value, <coughs> this quantity should be so keep in mind this because now we just uh, do substitute with number. So if you have the number, you can also get uh, um, you can uh, you can basically uh, calculate here the expected return of <coughs> the complex portfolio as uh, again the risk free rate multiply y minus 15 minus 7. These are given by the exercise. I can also calculate y, rewriting my formulation in this way, where I have uh, uh, SP, that I know that is equal uh, to 25, uh, 25%. So at the end, uh, what I get, uh, I can rewrite my formulas in this way. So 7 multiply uh, 8, that is the difference between 15, the expected return of my risky portfolio minus the risk free rate, divided 22%, that is this guy here, okay? And then the only stuff that I don't know is this, uh, uh, yes. So then I can uh, rearrange this equation, sorry, in a such way that I can calculate the slope
the sharper action will give me the slope of my capital location line. The capital location line is the definition is the straight line that link the, the pass through the history rate and, and the link my history rate with my portfolio P. That is the portfolio P that we had before. Remember that the slope so is the sharper ratio also we call the volatility ratio. Okay. 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 This is simple, you just divide the two parts of the equation for sigma C. Um, okay, let's do another example right now. If you remember this morning, uh, we spoke about the buying of margin. So suppose that you want to invest in the total risky assets for under $20,000, but you only have uh, three actually, so your equity is equal to $300,000. So this means that if you want to invest uh, what four hundred twenty thousand dollars uh, and you only have three hundred thousand uh, dollars, you need to get uh, from your broker, you need to get some funds, uh, bank or whatever, equal to one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So if you look at the ratio, so when you have an epsilon, you remember epsilon is the quantity that I can invest in the risky portfolio. My y in this case uh, is 1.4. So this means uh, oh, that I borrow, that I invest in more money of what I, as an investor, own uh, on a risky activity. The rest is short selling, borrowing position. So when gamma is negative, means short selling, borrowing position, while a quantity higher than one, this means that you you are using the money that you borrow to invest in the risky asset. So again, the same formula that we had before, we can suppose that the risk free rate, this is what we got before, Do you remember 0 0.36 in the example before, this is the slope of my equation. If I can borrow a lend at the same uh, interest rate, this means uh, that I will be in this uh, line here, where the inclination is 0 0.36. But the majority of the people cannot lend, apart from the government, the majority of the people cannot borrow the same interest rates that they use for lending. So here, until P, this means that you are using your own money. You are not borrowing anything. If you go, if you move from P on the other part of the line, you will see the inclination is lower. Why? Because part of your uh, uh, reward is going to be, uh, from investing in a risk activity, is going to be um, reduced by lending, by the fact, sorry, that you are borrowing money from someone else. So the return of your investment is going to be lower. 27%. So this is the where the line king kings. Above this line you are borrowing. It's the quantity that you don't own. Here um, you, don't, so you don't have enough equity to invest in uh, uh, in the risky assets. Here instead uh, is not uh, uh, is not a borrowing position. So again, if you look back at the slides that we saw before, if your margin could change is equal to 50%, then uh, if your net worth, so the equity in the account is 300,000, the broker is allowed to lend you up to 300,000 because uh, the margin is going to be 300,000 divided 600,000. This will uh, lead to an y equal to 2. So if you want to know how, many, how much money you can invest in the risky assets, you can invest a quantity equal to two if the margin with your broker is equal to 50%. Because if uh, the margin, uh, suppose that you invest 2.5, this means that you are borrowing too much money and you have to put more cash, more equity there. So if you look at the slide of this morning, you will uh, you 
together, you can also perceive these are. You can see again how you calculate the margin. But if you remember, ma the margin was the equity divided the total amount of investment. So as you can see here, this is the, um, what we got. So if I have, uh, if I can borrow, uh, if y can be equal to two maximum, if my margin must be equal to 50%, because I can only, I can borrow the half money, the half uh, money, uh, um, if, sorry, the money equal to half the value of my total investment. So I can get maximum, I can invest maximum 600,000 pounds in uh, dollars in uh, as risky assets because my margin is equal to 50%. 50% of the money, of the total value of the investment can be borrowed by, from a broker. Okay, so now we are start to, to link all the concepts that we saw this morning and the previous concept. So right now I have the expected return of uh, an investment in a risk-free asset and uh, in a risky portfolio. So what I want to know now it's uh, uh, what is my optimum portfolio. So as, as we said, I have different choice, uh, choices. I can invest different quantity, different money in the risky activity. So the question is, okay, how much money can I, should, I, should I invest in the risky activities? Of course, in the example that we saw before, there is a limit. I have to invest less than two because my margin it's equal to 50%. Nobody will borrow me more than 300,000 pounds. But now, below that two, how much must, must be my Y? Of course, uh, to measure the quantity that we want to invest in the risky asset, we need to take in account uh, the risk attitude of every one of us. If I'm more risk averse, should I invest more money in Y or less money in Y? If, I, if I'm more risk averse, if I have to put the money in a risk-free asset or in a risky portfolio, where I should put more money? In less money in the risky asset, in the risky asset, more money eventually in the risk-free asset. If, she, if she's risk-seeking, because she's crazy, she's young, she don't care, whatever, she will put more money in the risk-free asset or more in the risky asset. <laughs> So this means that your Y is going to be lower or higher? Y. Y is the quantity that I invest in, uh, uh, as you can see here, Y is the proportion of the money that you will invest in the portfolio, in the risky portfolio. So the Y is going to be higher, okay? So now we are understanding what these uh, numbers are. Y, if we have a margin, so based on the exercise, it must be lower than two. But Y can be 0 0.2, 0 0.3. This means that 20% of your money are invested in risky assets. Or 30%, 40%. How we can decide how much money we, we want to invest in the risky asset? We need to Look at the, what should I look at? What, what I should I look at? If you are, if you are more risk averse than me, so what I need to take in account in my equation? A. A, yes, that A, A, why do I need to take in account A? Because A will allow me to calculate what? Utility function, we saw before. So I want to know where is my curve. 
So basically, um, it's this. So depending on my utility function, okay, that is a function of A, depending on this, I will, uh, um, I need to find out where, what is the, 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 the utility function that fits with the investment, with the capital location, right? it is the combination of my risk-free assets and uh, uh, risky portfolio. So in this case, uh, I want to find, uh, um, graphically, uh, given different uh, curves, uh, I want to find this tangent, tangent point. Why? Because if I'm here, given the same amount of risk, uh, first of all, this is the only possible combination. So, this is the only possible combination. So if I'm here, uh, what, what I see if I'm here or here? What, what, do you, what do you think? So I have a more utility function is it provide me with higher utility. So instead of being here, if I'm here, so if I adjust the combination of uh, the quantity that, that I can invest in my portfolio, I can get a higher utility. So adjusting, investing more money in the risk uh, assets compared to the portfolio. So higher utility, better is going to be the, the, the investment given my risk profile. So graphically, Mathematically, this means uh, that I want to maximize my utility function, where we measure my utility function in this way, subject to what? To the capital location line. Why subject? Because, of course, uh, this is the only payoff that I can get. So, is the combination in the, on the line, you get all the possible combination of the expected return and standard deviation given those two specific uh, assets. So it's simple, this is a simple, uh, sorry, this is a simple uh, maximization problem. Uh, here, this is my utility function, this is my constraints. So I just substitute these constraints, as you can see here, in this equation here. So this means that if I go here, I can just substitute these guys here, I can put here, okay? And then what I do, I just get this equation. So my utility function is a function of different uh, of different items, expected return, uh, risk free rate, standard deviation. What, what is the unknown variable, the variable that I want to identify? is my y, because I want to know how much money I have to invest in the risky asset. 
So how can I do? I just do a simple derivation. So I have my utility function. I want to maximize my utility function given my quantity, uh, quantity y that I can invest in the, these three assets. I just sort out, so I put this equation equal to zero. I sort out per, uh, I solved this equation for y. And then at the end, I can identify my optimum quantity. So the quantity that given my A, as someone told me before, to default to my utility function, will tell me how much I have to invest with my investment. So uh, given, suppose, an A equal to, uh, so this is the, you can solve uh, that maximization problem will give you this uh, uh, equation. So suppose that after a survey, you know the A of your client, you just have to substitute the number here you know that the expected return of your portfolio, given the exercise I described before, is 15% minus the risk free rate multiplied A, suppose 4, standard uh, variance of your portfolio. Then what you have here, you have uh, the quantity that you can invest in the risk free asset, that is 41% of your money. So if you invest the 41% of your money in those risky asset, you will get the maximum utility function given those two investments available for yourself. So this means that 59% of your money are going to be invested in the risk free asset. Okay, we just stop here 10 minutes, sir. And then we keep on. Uh, then we will start with a couple of exercises together and then we